Greetings and salutations, folks. My name is Nick, and welcome back to Scarlet Hollow, where strange things are afoot. Omens of terrible things to come have sprung up in the wilderness as actual monsters, possibly mutating the local wildlife. Only the library can provide us answers. Let us go meet... Um, we are going to meet... Stel, Stella at the library where she has scones. So we are mostly there for the scones. We are partially there for the mystery. You enter the former town hall. Oh, also I believe uh I forget her name. It's I don't think it's Danica. I could be horribly wrong. Uh, you enter the former town hall. What once must have been a stately foyer has since been converted into rows of shelves. Meeting rooms and offices long ago gave way to assorted reference collections and reading areas. And reading adventures. And whatever is going on here. Miners are carrying a steel girder with a man tied to it. And the children are laughing. Stella! Oh, hey, you made it. Kanika, not Danika. Kanika. Hmm. Yeah, let's settle in. You head, o you head over to Stella and Kanika's table and settle in. You made it. Glad you could join us. And it's Gretchen. The pug. Morning, Malice. You look tired. Um, I ain't no snitch. Let's see, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Um, I've never done a Scooby-Doo before. Somebody died, Malice. <laughs> yeah, the estate isn't the easiest place to get a good eight hours. I never realized houses could get so windy. I can only imagine that place was already falling apart the last time I was there and it's been years. I can't believe it hasn't been condemned. Same here, I can't even believe it hasn't fallen off that cliff. Not that there's anyone here to do the condemning. Anyway, I guess we should get started. Oh, but before I forget, we've got to talk about that photo you sent me this morning. Kanika, check this out. Malice found it in Tabby's garden this morning, right in line of sight of her room. What in the world is that liquid around it? It looks like pus. I, uh, I appreciate the fact that Gretchen is also participating. Um... Do you think it's Wayne? That creep who keeps coming around my mom's tea room? He snuck up on us last night and called out Malice by name. And those boot prints match up with the mining getup. Whoa, apparently I missed a lot last night, huh? I wonder if there's any connection between that guy and what happened in the woods last night. I mean, there seems to be some connection. Although it's hard to tell at this point if it's a red herring in the storyline. Much like communism is to Clue. Like what? I mean, I don't have anything specific, but we do have that whole prophecy of impending doom angle to explore, and this photo is weird. I can't stop thinking about those splatters on the ground. If he's sick, maybe it's from the creatures you encountered. Hey there, strangers. And literal stranger. Uh, hey, I'm Malice, Tabitha's cousin. I'm in town for the funeral. Oh, I should have known you were a Scarlet. You look so much like Vivian. Not that I knew her very well. I was still a kid when she left. But that Scarlet resemblance, it's strong. Um, I'm Oscar Gutierrez, chief librarian and only librarian. Oscar's amazing. He practically built this library from scratch. 
Yeah, I'm a little jealous of what the kids around here got to grow up with. They don't know how good they have it. Hold on a second. Didn't we earlier re learn that the library used to be the town hall? So he clearly didn't build it from scratch, unless he also built the town hall and then converted it into a library. So... And also wrote all the books. Back when I was in elementary school, all the library had was a couple shelves of boring books donated by old people. Y'all are too kind, but speaking of kids, have either of you seen Rosaline around town? I don't want to be a helicopter dad, but she didn't come home last night and I wanted to make sure she isn't getting into trouble out there. You know the crowd she hangs around with. She hangs around with adorable pugs, encrypted hunters, and store clerks. They're good kids at heart. I'm sure they just up at I'm sure they're just up at the old Maxwell place doing teen stuff. I went up there plenty of times in my day, but I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled. Uh, what's the old Maxwell place? Uh, it's this great old abandoned spot. We used to hang out there when we were in when we were teens. I can't believe I used to be so reckless. The floors there were like Swiss cheese. I should really have a talk with Rosalina when she gets home. Kids are smarter than you think. She can take care of herself. You might not want to let her run off like that anymore, though. It's not as safe as it usually is around here. Or is that so? Kanika's right. There's some weird stuff going out in the woods. That's actually why we came in today. Have you heard of it? creatures called ditchlings? They're a type of cryptid that shows up around places on the brink of disaster. They're kind of like... They kind of look like the Pillsbury Doughboy. If the... They kind of look like if the Pillsbury Doughboy was a creepypasta. Would I really make that comparison? More like if the product that you squeezed out of the Pillsbury Doughboy can was then given arms and legs and a mouth. Yes. But not cooked prior to cooking. Uh, Kanika's mom told us about them last night after seeing some footage we got in the woods. Ditchlings. Doesn't ring a bell. Dang, worth a shot. Okay, if you were, say, trying to predict a horrible disaster that might befall our town, where would you start looking? Oh, I also appreciate this hand-drawn ditchling here. Well, they say history repeats itself, so I'd probably try and figure out what sort of disasters this region typically falls prey to. Or should I be worried about something? I don't know yet. I'll be right back. Gonna go nab some more books. Behave while I'm gone, Gretchen. Aw, oh, you don't have to worry about her. Stella, she, you're such a good dog, aren't you, Gretchen? Here, have a biscuit, old gal. Gretchen inhales the soft biscuit, drool leaking from her toothless mouth as she swallows it whole. Now Gretchen's happy. I'm pretty sure Stella's barking up the wrong tree, Oscar. I don't think you have to worry about any horrible calamity befalling this town. But she's right about the weird stuff. There's definitely something unusual going on out in these woods. Um... A man is already dead. Uh, whatever's out there in the woods has been brutalizing the local wildlife. I don't think it's safe. I'm gonna go try- I'm gonna try calling Rosalina again. I'm sure she's fine, really. Rosalina's a smart kid. She knows better than to go around getting into trouble, and we'll make sure to keep our eyes, eyes peeled. Thanks, Kanika. And Malice, if you see a 13-year-old girl with a black braid and glasses, would you let her know her dad is worried about her? Oscar anxiously wanders off, phone in hand. Got him. Just grabbed a whole mess of local history books. And now the real reading begins. You could even call this the Dark Souls of Reading. Stella sets a massive pile of books on the table and pulls up a chair. All right. 
Got our snacks, got our source documents, let's get this research party started. This is going to be so much faster with the two of you here to help out. I'll be doing most of my research online. You never know what kind of weird biases the folks writing these books might have. I mean, you could say that for any writing source, really. Uh, whatever you find online might be biased too, you know. Thank you, Stella, for backing me up. Which is why we cross-reference things. Yeah, you're right. It's good to cast a wide net. Guess the books are up to me and Malice. Reading awaits. Reading is for suckers. <laughs> Alright, let's flip through Veins of Scarlet, a history of the Scarlet Hollow coal mines. Forced into retirement at age 50 due to a war injury for his time in the Indian Wars. Exas exacerbated by his short stint serving as a captain in the Confederacy, Silas Scarlet also lost his eldest two sons to that bloodiest of wars, leaving his third eldest son, Andrew Jackson Scarlet, to take charge of the mine. Under his leadership, the mine prospered, undoubtedly in part due to the growth of the railroad industry. Is this just an actual photograph? And also that. Managed to evade the coal union for decades, making them one of the most profitable mines in the country. Andrew Scarlet built the surrounding town into what it is today, with expensive stone buildings, a bustling main street, and overseeing it all the elegant Scarlet estate that was, until 1889, the largest and finest feat of architecture in the region. Culminating in the tragic collapse of 1918, it was found that Charles Shaw, the co-manager of the mine, had loosened security measures to increase production during World War I resulting in a fatal collapse in the deaths of over 160 men and boys, some as young as 10. The casualties included Andrew Jackson Scarlet's eldest son Theodore, who had taken over for his aging father during the bustle of the war. His brother Enoch V. Scarlet managed to pull the mine from the brink of ruin, thereby saving the town. Also, that is an adorable bat. So this is how your family made its fortune. Silas Everett Scarlet was born to Colonel Everett J. Scarlet in 1818, one of the 12 siblings. One of 12 siblings. So big family. He grew up in eastern North Carolina during a tumultuous time in the state's history and not much is known about his life before he joined the army in 1836. He quickly rose through the ranks, in part due to his father's connections, but also due to a particular ruthlessness for which he received the name Bloody Silas Scarlet. The federal government granted the now Captain Silas a tract of bounty land in exchange for his service in the Indian War, and he settled into the hills of North Carolina in 1841, that land would become Scarlet Hollow. But it started as a simple log cabin built by Silas' own two hands, occupied by his family of ten, Silas, his wife Mary Joseph Scarlet, and their eight children. Logging business brought many workers and fellow landowners to the hills, but it wasn't until Silas discovered rich seams of coal running underneath the entire region that Scarlet Hollow was really put on the map. He saved what he could and bought the surrounding hillside at a great discount, cleverly hiding what he knew about the land's true value. Thus, he had all the resources to found Scarlet Hollow's now famous coal mine. You're finished with this one. A few entries catch your eye. Hmm. Ah, uh, Tommy Knockers. Let's read about the Wampus Cat. Often linked to Cherokee legends, some cite the Wampus Cat as originating with the story of a woman who sought vengeance against a monstrous cat demon for driving her husband mad. She hunted it down by wearing a bobcat mask, tricking, 
tricked it into using its own vile magic on itself, freeing the people of their region from its evil. Others say the creature comes from the story of a woman who wore the pelt of a wild cat to witness forbidden hunting rites. The hunters of her village gathered to perform the rites and she watched in secret from underneath the cat's pelt, but was soon discovered. For her indiscretion, she was fused with the pelt and transformed into a creature that was neither human nor cat, forced to wander the wilderness alone, feared by all. Her calls are those of great sadness and serve as a warning to anyone who dares go against tradition. All right, uh, let's learn about the Tabinockers, enigmatic cave dwelling creatures primarily known for causing mischief. I didn't realize that Tabinockers were a thing. I, I assumed that they were like a creation of Stephen King for his novel, but I did not realize that they might actually be drawn from some inspiration is what I'm assuming. Also, for some reason, I'm drinking tea right now. I have no idea what kind. Tommyknockers originated in Cornish mythology, spreading to the United States when Cornish immigrants began working in Appalachian mines. They're named for the knocking that can be heard from seemingly within the walls before a cave-in. According to some, the knocking serves as a benevolent warning. Others believe that the creatures take stolen hammers to the supports of mines and collapse them on whoever is unfortunate enough to still be inside. They are traditionally thought to be impish, leprechaun-like beings, but some claim they are the spirits of dead miners, forever cursed to haunt their final resting place. And now the Tailypo, a small creature with a long tail and wide yellow eyes. There was a hunter who lived in a tiny cabin in the middle of the woods, all alone with his hunting dog. One night after a particularly bad week of hunting, both their stomachs empty, the hunter spied something out of the corner of his eye. Some small creature had gotten into the cabin through a hole, and before he could even figure out what it was, he'd drawn his gun and fired at the thing his hunger guiding his actions. But it was quick, and ran back through its hidey hole and out of sight, leaving only its long black tail shot off by the hunter's rifle. Guess this'll have to do, he said to his dog, and threw the tail in a pot to cook a soup. He and his dog ate well that night, the tail filling them both up. The hunter crawled into bed, satisfied, and his dog curled up at his feet. He woke up to the sound of long nails scrabbling across wood. His dog was nowhere in sight, only a rumpled spot on the covers where he'd been. In the gloom, he saw two big yellow eyes staring right at him. I want my taily po. A high, hoarse voice croaked from the darkness. Go away, he screamed at the thing. But it stepped closer to him, still shrouded in darkness, the sound of long claws dragging across hardwood accompanying its movements. I want my tailypo, the creature growled again. I'll get my dog after you, the hunter squeaked, his voice catching in his throat with fear, but there was no dog to be seen. I want my tailypo! Before the hunter could so much as scream, the creature leapt from the darkness, long claws stretched out towards the hunter. No one is sure what the creature did to him that night, but the next morning all that remained of the hunter, his dog, and his cabin was a chimney standing alone in the woods. Okay, but then who reported the story? I mean, that's, that's a neat story, but if there was... It's kind of like, um... The whole thing with, uh... What, what is that, um... That older movie called? With Orson Welles. With all, like, the Rosebud stuff. With the sled. Citizen Kane. Wow. So in Citizen Kane, the entire movie is uh, them, like it ends with his death. He says, Rosebud, and dies. 
And everybody's like, what's this rosebud? But nobody was in the room to hear him. You close the book and put it back. I think I'm all done. Let's check in. And I also haven't eaten any scones. I'm very disappointed by my lack of scones. Also, I haven't saved my game in a while, so I will do that. Alright. If we're going with what Kanika's mom told us last night, I think we can rule out any natural disasters as what brought the Ditchlings here. But not nuclear incidents. Looks like our state has a history with those. What about y'all? Find anything? Oh. Before you can respond, a handsome black cat leaps, leaps onto the table. Stella quickly slams her book shut. Aw, oh, hey, Pixel. You might want to close your book. He lo loves to rip up any paper he can find. Ah, uh, don't worry, little guy. I didn't forget your treats. Pixel immediately goes to town on Stella's treats. Sorry if Pixel's bothering y'all. Hopefully he hasn't gobbled up any of our books. He can't stand the thought that people might pay attention to anything that isn't him. Why do you let a paper shredder freely wander a library? <laughs> Have you seen this little guy's face? How could I say no to that? This is true. I completely, uh, understand. You decide to leave Pixel B. The cat curls up on the table, fast asleep. Alright, I better get back to shelving. Let me know if you all need anything. Oh my. Alright. Have you had any luck with Rosalina? <sighs> Not yet. I know a teen would be a handful, but I didn't think it'd be happen overnight. I'll probably head out once you're all done and check in on her usual haunts. Stella, what was that you were saying about nuclear incidents? You were talking about that Goldsboro thing, right? Uh, yeah. Apparently in the 60s, a B-52 carrying a live warhead broke up in broke up midair and dropped a couple bombs. Ugh. Fascinating bit of history there. The first of the two bombs landed up right after its parachute got caught in a tree. Thankfully, it didn't go off. At the time, the government claimed that the bomb was unarmed, but it later came out that the only thing preventing a detonation was a single electrical switch which failed to trigger on the descent. And 60 years later, the second bomb still hasn't been recovered. Right, its conventional explosive disintegrated in midair, but most of the nuclear material was made unrecoverable by flooding. If I remember correctly, they just buried it and sealed it up. Okay, that seems very problematic. If the bomb is somewhere else, why would there be so many ditchlings here? Yeah, Goldsboro is almost 400 miles from here. Not that we should be looking too hard at the disaster angle. Whatever these creatures are, they're biological. Look, you never know with radiation. We actually know quite a bit. It just melts you. It doesn't make monsters. And a 60-year-old bomb isn't going to explode on its own hundreds of miles away and kill us here. You never know. There could always be a whole underground society of bomb-worshipping mutants just waiting to blow it up. I've missed this. <laughs> Alright. You lean in quietly and whisper to Stella and Kanika. Do you think that there's like a cult here? Um. Those cops were awfully suspicious last night. Really weird combination of being dismissive and trying to pin things on me. I don't know, it just feels like a cover up. Yeah, that was pretty bad, but I'm not sure they really have it in them to be part of a cult. Definitely. I don't think they're capable of putting in the effort. Alright, so about the coal mines here. Kanika visibly shudders. 
I get cold sweats just thinking about being in a place like that. I feel for the guys who work up there. I would never. I could never. Speak for yourself. I love a good crevasse. Um, what happened after the mine collapse? The book just kind of glosses over that. Uh, there was a union for a little bit, but it didn't last. There's not a whole lot written about the past century here. Yeah, the Scarlet Hollow Mine isn't exactly the most ethically run business. No offense or anything, I'm sure Tabby runs the mines better than Charles Shaw did. Still hasn't let the union in, though. There's a reason she and I don't talk. A union-busting mine collapsed from poor working conditions. Color me shocked. Yeah, it's pretty awful. That's what this, that sculpture out front is for, commemorating all the men and children who died that day. Every kid in Scarlet Hollow learns about the collapse of 1918. Our teachers love to emphasize how many children they had working down there, probably to try and show us how good we have it or whatever. Low bar, if you ask me. You know, that could be what the Ditchlings are warning us about, another collapse. Writing it down on the list of potential disasters. Yeesh, Stella, that's morbid. And besides, it was all Charles Shaw's fault. The labor market is way more strict now, and there's no way you could get away with the kind of safety cutbacks he pulled. Uh, y'all don't actually think the mine is about to collapse, right? Haha, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Phew, had me worried there for a second. I hate to give Tabitha any credit, but the mine is safer now than it was back then. Still, what a horrible thought. You never know. You guys really seem to have a bone to pick with Charles Shaw. That's what happens when someone directly causes a monumental disaster, especially in a small town like this. People tend to spit whenever they hear your name. He got run out of town on a rail, you know. And that's not a figure of speech. Back then, they actually tied you to a rail and ran you out of town. There's a big mural of it over on the far wall. Oh, okay. So that's what the mural is. That that was the picture of the man tied to the, to the steel girder. That was Charles Shaw being directed out of town after he screwed over the town. <clears throat> he got off easy, if you ask me. Um, what if there's something toxic in the mines poisoning the town? Wayne seems sick. Honestly, that sounds like one of the most plausible explanations we've had so far. What about the ditchlings? I don't know, maybe there's some sort of parasite down in the mines. Maybe it infected Wayne, and maybe Wayne infected the local wildlife. Huh, yeah, that could work. So, Silas Scarlet. What a revisionist biography. Really glosses over all the war crimes to paint a picture of a self-made man. It's a perfect example of why you should use multiple sources for your research instead of trusting the first thing you read on a subject. I mean, I suppose a real-world example would be Christopher Columbus. It's hard for me to think about Christopher Columbus without immediately thinking in 1492 he sailed the ocean blue. Like these, it's it's almost like um, that dog. Ah, oh, geez. All these references uh, are just gone. Pavlov. Pavlov's dog? Yeah. Yep, dude was a monster. Sorry you're related to him. It must be like in the movie Poltergeist. Um, Silas seems like a terrible person, but I don't see what this has, that has to do with bad omens or creatures in the woods. I agree, we're talking about ancient history here. Yeah, we probably have better leads. It never hurts to have historical context. This is important. So, Appalachian Folk Monsters. 
Oh uh, yeah. Wampus Cat was about revenge. The Tommyknockers. Eh. All of these stories I read were about revenge. Huh, guess it's a popular subject for myths and urban legends. Uh, Wampus cats kind of sound like they could be mountain lions, a voice like a woman crying out somewhere between a person sized and cat size. Definitely, they are 100% mountain lions. Kanika, you know there are no mountain lions up here. I thought you were supposed to be a skeptic. But the myths are old, right? Mountain lions didn't go extinct in Appalachians that long ago. Those legends just haven't died off yet. Almost every cryptid can be tracked down to either a hoax or someone getting confused about a perfectly normal animal, sometimes both. Bigfoot, for instance, started as a prank, then folks saw bears walking around on their hind legs and got freaked out, and now here we are. You'll eat those words when I get the first clear footage of a Bigfoot. If you manage that, I will print out a piece of paper that says Bigfoot isn't real and literally eat it. I promise. Really, you shouldn't do that. You should make like a cake that says Bigfoot isn't real and then have a slice. That would probably be better for you. Or maybe carve Bigfoot isn't real into toast. Still better than eating paper. I'm holding you to it. Stella, there was literally a mountain lion in the ditchling nest last night. What? No, no way. Let me check the footage real quick. Stella pulls out her phone. Well, there aren't any alive ones in these parts. Do you think the ditchlings are Tommyknockers? What's what, 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 with the whole warning thing? Good thought, but Tommyknockers live in mines. It's like their whole thing. I'm going to write it down, though. Tommy knockers are literally just sounds that happen when a bunch of rocks and wood are about to collapse. Are they? Or are they the sound of mysterious creatures pounding on the rocks and support beams with hammers to cause a collapse? There's simply no way to know. <laughs> My mom used to tell me that Taily Poe story back when I was little. I can't believe I forgot that one. It scared me so bad I didn't eat soup for years. I thought a monster might try and dig it out of my stomach if I did. <laughs> I love that one. There's this old chimney in the woods that I used to think was the chimney from Taylipo. The one that was left after that th thing did whatever it did. Now I know that's just because chimneys don't burn down and wooden houses do. That makes a lot of sense. That doesn't mean it's not the chimney from Taylipo. I've camped out there a couple times and seen some pretty spooky stuff. Uh, yeah, I've watched that video. You saw raccoons. You're gonna get rabies one of these days chasing after wildlife like that. What can I say? I like to live on the edge. All right, let's save right here. Continue next time. In the meantime, got any suggestions for someone to play next? Leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have yourselves a good night.